Hey folks, welcome back to Black and White. Here in Driftvale City, heading off to Route 6. And of course, we have a rival fight, why wouldn't we? We always have a rival fight. Honestly, Bianca just seems to be going through the motions. Like, she doesn't really seem to care about our badge, she's like, okay, yeah, we should probably fight, but, uh... I think she's becoming disillusioned or something. Anywho, uh, her team has not changed much other than uh, higher level and maybe evolutions, I don't remember. Her deer intimidate, the same deal as before, he's work up to combat it and then get to return. Honestly, the Lilo fights here are nowhere near as interesting as the team fights. And that's saying something, because the team fights aren't actually too stellar either. So, on the team side, uh, using uh, Scald here, because... Okay, no, I'm not using Scald here. Oh, right, because Scald would put him into the red, so uh, she would heal him. Uh, using Scald is a special move, so it doesn't matter, the Intimidate uh, lowers the attack. But didn't really want to waste time with her healing stuff, so there you go. Anywho... She has, again, her stupid elemental pan monkey. One of these days it's gonna evolve. One of these days. But it's not now. It's dead. And excellent tight matchup here. Uh, really annoying that he used Yawn, because I'd like to use Berlanga on the next Pokemon she has. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's dead in one hit. The monkeys are not gonna be the problem. And her starter hasn't changed much, it's up a couple levels, it's dying, because return and all that, yeah. Oh, it lives by 1 HP, that's great, that's wonderful. Which means it gets to live uh, one more turn, that's great, that's wonderful. And yeah, that's, that's, this is the point where they start getting, like, good healing items, like, better than they really need. So now they can do basically uh, heal the Pokemon back to full health and start everything over again. And uh, hello, energy ball on a water type. It's dead. Bye bye. And Wisharna. Wisharna might give you uh, a bit of, of tediousness difficulty because it has good defenses. But, other than that, it's not actually very threatening on the offensive side. It has sleep moves, which can be annoying, but not dangerous. It is a little bit bad. But some crunching, and it's over with. Now, this matchup is going to take a while, because I really wanted Manfred to take out his evolved form. But... It just turned into a hypnosis yawning fest, and it got pretty tedious and uh, unnecessarily long. So basically, you're gonna see me just faffing about a bit, and, and then just saying, screw it. And it doesn't help that Manfred only has psychic moves, which are not very effective against Musharna. I mean, we have Nightmare, but that's not actually gonna do super effective damage, uh, because it's one of those sap HP each turn kind of things. Yeah. And in retrospect, I, I should have used Nightmare the first turn. I, I think that might have been a misclick, I don't remember. But yeah, I... I really wish I had Dream Eater at this point, honestly. Because Dream Eater would be so much more useful. It would actually be super effective, it would do a lot more damage, and it would heal Manfred as, as little as he needs it right now. But no, just... Just, uh, Psybeam and, and, and all that fun. And she probably still has a Hyper Potion, if I remember right, so... Yeah, just, just... I like mirror matches, but when it comes to things like this, probably not the most entertaining or best idea. So, so take it from me. Either get a good moveset on your Pokémon, or 
don't do what would be thematically appropriate. I, th I was getting really excited when it hit himself in confusion, but Hyper Potion just killed that buzz. And yeah, screw it, Berlanga coming in using Crunch, it's over, basically. Getting lucky with the, with the hitting itself, but overall just more tedious than it really should have been. Oh, and she had another Hyper Potion, I completely forgot about that. So, it was definitely a good idea not to leave Manfred in there. Now luckily Crunch lowers defense, so that'll combat the uh, defense curls that it's been doing. But, yeah, just go for the super effective guys. You'll be glad you did. Edmund's still growing. You'll get to see him soon. Ta-da, we get HM2 Fly, very similar to the uh, section in Ruby Sapphire Emerald where May gives you HM2 Fly right before uh, the 6th gym. Here you're just leaving the 5th gym and you get HM2 Fly after beating your female rival. Fun. Not gonna use it. Yep, Route 6 is where they threw in the Seasons gimmick in full force as you will not really see. But what you will see is finally Edmund in action. Uh, Route 6's main attraction is this Pokemon called Dirt Deerling, which changes its appearance based on the season, which changes every month, but it's always a grass normal type. So Edmund here, as an ice type, will be able to be super effective against it. Avalanche is a move that always goes second, and if you take damage uh, before getting, uh, before using Avalanche, it will do double damage. That was dangerous, but Avalanche does double duty. Wasn't necessary. But there you go, Edmund in action. You'll see more and more of him in the coming episodes. So the thing is, in white, it wasn't raining, but in black, it was. And I don't think that's tied to the version, I think that's just a random occurrence that, that can happen. And it's, I don't know, it's cool, random stuff. That, that, that's why she has the parasol, because it was raining that, in one timeline. But yeah, you'll see a lot of Deerling uh, on this route, both Trainers and Wild. And uh, this guy is part of this research team investigating the Deerling, and he basically wants to see one change. So if you're feeling generous and you have time on your hands, you can go catch one, uh, show it to him, let the seasons change, show it to him again, or let the season change, catch a new one in the new form, and show it to him. And uh, I don't even remember what he gives you. But you get a nice sense of satisfaction. Unfortunately, I'm not catching Deerling in white, so whatevs, I am out of here. But, in black, I decided to be generous and go grab one. Not gonna use it on my team, but... See? Right there. And so he'll give this different little poetic spiel, uh, based on whatever season it is. It's a nice little flavor text, but pretty unnecessary. Now then, item over here, elixir. One of these days I'm gonna use them. Might not be till Elite Four, but I'm gonna use them. Elixirs heal PP for all moves, if you weren't aware. And so all the scientists on this route have dealing, basically. So yeah, you fight them, and it's done, and repel. Started using repels more and more, because good lord, lots, lots, lots of, of wild stuff. 
Anyway, new Pokemon here that I just want to show off is Frillish. And it's interesting because it's a ghost type. And it's also one of the few uh, Unova Pokemon with gender differences. Females are pink, me uh, boys are green. I mean, not green, uh, blue. I'm not colorblind, I swear. But yeah, they're ghost types, so use Crunch. Other than that, they're not very interesting, other than being ghost jellyfish. Another new interesting Pokemon, right up in here, is this generation's ripoff Voltorb. And it's even more shameless in its Pokeball-esque aesthetic. It's, it's Fungus. It has literally evolved to have a Pokeball on its, on its hat. I don't know why that would be a survival of the fittest to help it to live longer. I, I, I don't know. But anyway, they're hanging around. Uh, they're like Voltorbs, basically, if you have played uh, basically any of the games. Yeah, there's a game in every generation that has a Voltorb or Electrode hanging around on the overworld. And that guy gives the basic design choices for every cave ever. And get a quick rest here. And that guy gives the design choice for basically every modern cave in video games. So now head up north, up to... Nice timing, Rappel. Up to Charge Stone Cave, and see it's raining. And I, I just switched to the rain because I think this scene looks cool in the rain. Galvantula. Galvantula are pretty cool. I haven't used one and I won't use one, but they're pretty cool. And ta doodly da. Get bulldoze, which um, is is actually a pretty decent ground move. Nowhere near as good as some ground moves like say earthquake, but it's it's decent, and I'll be replacing dig. Bye bye clay. So, yep, I'll be replacing dig. Uh, Bulldoze has 60 base power, Dig has 80 as of, I believe, this generation, might have been 4th gen. Uh, but the important thing is, Bulldoze can attack both turns, whereas Dig is a two-turn move, so overall, getting more bang for my buck. And a lower speed, which is nice. Definitely nice. And more PP, you know, that's nice. That's, that's also very nice. And ta-da, that's Bulldoze. So, that takes care of that, and I will see you guys next time.